Hey, welcome to the channel where we show you how to put some prep in your step. Uh, as you know, this has been a series on creating some Tableau prep templates to complement some of your favorite viz templates that are out there. We've already gone through the uh, bump chart, the sigmoid bump chart. We've gone through the coxcomb chart. And so this week, we're going to look at the arc sankey. So this is an older one from the Flurlidge Twins website. Um, but still has a lot of uh, good application, good, uh, there's a lot of good calculations in there as well. And so what we're going to do this time though, uh, the blogs that I've been posting focus really just on here's the template and how you plug it in and make it work with the workbook. These videos are focused on showing how those templates are built out, giving you a better understanding of what's actually happening behind the scenes. And so there's, this one's going to be a little bit more involved. We're gonna build it out a little bit more. And we're also gonna start introducing some good practices. You know, one of the whole reasons of using Tableau Prep is as you're curating your data sets, you want to try and make sure that your end result is gonna be performant as well in Tableau Desktop. So if there's any calculations that aren't um, aggregate calculations that you know you're gonna need in your workbook, you can push those into your prep flow. So that's what we're gonna do with this template. We're gonna take some of the calculations that were happening in the uh, workbook template, and we're gonna push some of those into the prep flow. So let's jump in. So I'm connected to my workbook here, and the first thing we're gonna do is just take a look at the data template. So again, I'm gonna post a link to the original blog and then to my blog post about this. Um, but here is what the original data template looked like. So we've got our arc sheet, um, which has a from field, a to field, and a value field. And so this is something that you need to fill in. So you've got, you, however you know that you want your arc to look, you've got to go in and fill in those from and to and what those values are. Um, and then it has this join field to join it to the other sheets inside of the actual workbook. And we've got this order uh, sheet, which just shows our dimensions and what order they're in. And then there's also a model sheet, which contains points from, let's see, is it zero? No, it's one to 101. And then we've got this T field, um, which when you actually take a look at it, what's, what it's really doing is just taking pi and dividing it by a hundred. Um, but then as you go down the list, it's, uh, this is adding to this. And so it's just pi um, divided by 100, but basically being multiplied um, as you go through each row. And so these fields, this this model sheet and this to from sheet, we're actually going to create inside the prep flow to simplify um, the process. And so really the sheets that we're going to leave is these arc and these order sheets. So when you're using this template, you're going to fill out these two sheets. Again, reference uh, the Flourlidge's original blog for how those need to be filled out. Um, but then you'll plug those into this template and it'll work uh, as we expect. So let me connect to my data then. I'm going to connect to Microsoft Excel and the ArcSign key template. So you can see I've got my four sheets here. Um, and then, you know what, let's take a look at the workbook too. So when we take a look at the workbook, that we're gonna be plugging this into. We wanna understand how the data is being modeled in here so we can make sure that our prep template is being built out appropriately. And so you can see all of our sheets are being joined back to that main arc sheet, but uh, you'll notice that there's two order sheets and this is just, it's the same order sheet, it's just one in one case it's being joined to the from field in the arc sheet. And in the other one, it's being joined to the to field in the arc sheet, but it's the same order sheet. And so we want our prep flow to be able to recreate this structure. And so that's what we're gonna do. So let's start out and we're gonna take our arc sheet and drag it in. Um, now what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna generate my, my model sheet and my to from sheet inside. With the model sheet, it's similar to the dynamic scaffolds that we've done. I uh, did it in the previous two templates. Um, so again, I'm not gonna get into super in-depth detail on those steps on how to go through and create them. Um, I've, I'll post some videos, uh, link some videos in the description. That way you can go and look at those in-depth, but I will just do a high-level overview of them. And so since I used that process so much, I've already got those 
steps saved. So I'm gonna click my plus button and insert my flow. And you can see I've got these dynamic scaffold steps. So again, high level, what this is doing is first I'm creating a range. And so for this, I need my range to be from zero to, or sorry, from one. So from one to 101. Okay, so I've created two fields, one with a value of one, one with a value of 101, and then I removed all of the other fields. And so uh, what this does though, is it creates that value for every row in the data set. So the next thing I need to do is deduplicate that. But first, let me just change this documentation real quick. So from one to 101, um, and then this is for the Arc Sankey chart. All right, and then we removed all other fields. And so now the deduplicate step, so we just added an aggregate step and then grouped by both of those fields. And so what this does is it returns every um, unique combination of values as a row. And so we've only got one unique combination of values. And so we get one row in return. So that's what this step is doing. Next, we pivot those into one column because when we're gonna use the new rows step, the, uh, if you're using integer values, they need to be in one column. So we pivot those using a wildcard pivot on the word point because our fields are called point start and point end. And the result is we get a field called point, which is what we want in, to plug in into our final data set. And it's got one column, two rows. We've got a row of one and a row of one and one. So now we're gonna use our new rows step um, values from one field. It's going to automatically go with the minimum and maximum values at the, as the start and the end. And then it's going to update the existing field in increments of one. And so you can see here it was before and all of those rows in between uh, one and 101 have been generated. And then what we did here is I created this field called a join and we're actually going to change the value of this to match up to our template. So on the template, the value is link. And so we're just gonna change the value here to link. So now that we've got that generated, we can actually, let's call this model because that's essentially what we've done here is we've recreated the model sheet inside of prep. And so um, one thing that we noticed in the model sheet originally was that T value field. And so um, in the actual Excel sheet, it's doing a lookup and kind of looking at the previous value and then adding to that as it goes on. Um, we can't do that quite yet in prep or maybe a future feature, but um, what, what really what it's doing is it's just taking a look at the um, previous value and multiplying pi divided by 100 by that value. So we can actually create this field and we're gonna call it T arc because in the workbook, this field is called T arc. And so what we're gonna say for this field is the first value in our sheet was zero. So if point is equal to one, then we want a zero. Else we wanna take pi divided by 100 and we want to multiply that by the previous point. And so the reason why I'm doing this, again, if we take a look at our original template and we look at the model sheet, that T value, when the point is one, then it's zero. When the point is two, then what it's doing is it's saying C2, so zero, plus pi divided by 100. Well, that's also the same as me saying pi divided by 100 times one. And here it's saying C3 plus pi divided by 100. So it's taking this value and adding pi divided by 100 and so again, that's the same as me taking uh, pi divided by 100 times two. So again, each of these values is pi divided by 100 multiplied by the previous point value. And so that's what I've created here in this calculation. And so if I save that, then what you'll see here, if I sort of bring this back in to line those up, is you'll see our T values are matching up. Perfect. So. Now we've embedded that here. And again, this is the same as our model sheet. 
Okay, now that we've got that, um, we're gonna generate the to from sheet now. And so it's gonna be almost the same process, but we're just not adding the new rows step to it. So we're really doing these first three steps and then just not adding the scaffold. So we can actually do that one real quick. So I'm gonna create a step, call this to from, and let's create a calculated field and call it two. Oops. Let's call that two with the value of string value of two. Save that. Create another calculated field. Call that from with a string value of from. Save that. So now we've got those two fields, and we're just going to go ahead and control click those and uh, keep only those fields. Okay. So now we've got two from right so now again it generates those values for every row in the data set we want to deduplicate that so we'll add an aggregate step we'll group by both of those fields and then since there's only one unique combination of values I only get one row in return we'll call that deduplicate so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna pivot those into uh, one column we want these in one column because when we take a look at our original model sheet uh, that's sort of the same outline, so let's do that real quick. Uh, so let me pivot. I'm just going to drag to here. I'm going to drag from here, and there we go. So we've got two of these. I'm just going to remove this field and rename this one to from. Last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, just create my join field here. So I'll create join and a field value of link. Okay. There we go. It's going to pop those fields back up because if you look at the order, it actually creates the calculated field before it does the pivot. Um, but this is what our output looks like. So we'll call that to from sheet because that's essentially what we've created here. The to from sheet. Now we can start bringing in our order sheet and doing the joins to recreate that workbook structure. So let's bring in the order sheet. We'll call this one from order. And we're going to join that here to our arc sheet. And let me move some of these around. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to call this join from. We're going to take a look at the actual join settings and for here what we're going to do is we're going to join again matching our workbook so we're going to take the from field from the arc sheet and join that to our dimension and so now this matches that same join that we saw in the workbook model and uh, next what we're going to do is we're going to rename one of the fields so we're going to add a clean step call this rename order and we're gonna rename the order field to uh, order from. And then we're going to remove the dimension field. So this is starting to look like the end result that we want in our Tableau workbook. Now what we need to do is we need to drag in a second copy of order. We'll call this to order. We'll bring this over here and join it to our clean step. And for the settings, we want to take the to field and join that to our dimension field. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to call this join to. Add a clean step. Oops. Move that. Add a clean step. Call this uh, rename order again. And this time we're gonna take that order field and rename it to order two. And once again, we're going to remove the dimension field. And the reason we're doing that is because we're actually gonna create a field called dimension, which is one of the calculations that's in the workbook. So now that we've got that squared away, we're gonna start adding our models. And so this is where we're gonna do some densification. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna join our model sheet to our orders. And we're gonna join on the join field. And what this does is this densifies our data. And so we've got 101 rows here and we've got 44 rows here. And so you can see that we get uh, for every row that is in our 
main path, so our main flow in the middle here, for every row that is in this sheet, it gets 101 rows. So we'll call this densify, because this is where our first step of densification is happening. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag our to from sheet and join it here. Um, let me make sure, actually real quick before I do that, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna take this duplicated join field and I'm gonna remove that one. Okay, so now we should be left with one join field. So now I'm gonna grab my to from sheet, join it here. It's gonna join on that join field. And what you'll see is now we've doubled the amount of rows we have. So we've redensified our data because we want a to and a from row for every single row in our densified data set. So we'll call this redensify. So first we had 44 rows. We multiplied those by 101. We blew our data set up to 44, 44. And then we multiplied that by two because we wanted a from and a to row. So now uh, the final step here this structure, if I come in here and remove my join fields, let me do that real quick because I don't need those. But what we wanna do is, again, introduce the concept of pushing calculations into prep to make the processing uh, simplified in Tableau Desktop. So there are a couple of calculations when we look at the workbook. So if I pull in this workbook here, this is the work we're gonna plug it into. And if I look at that arc field, let me remove these real quick. Um, so when I look in here, there are some calculations, right? There's this dimension calculation. Uh, and if I look at it, it's just, there's not any aggregation happening. It's just an if else statement. Same if I look at connection, there's no aggregation. It's just concatenating a string. If I look at dimension order X, it's just an if else statement. And so there's a couple of these in here that are just some if else statements that I can push into prep. So that way desktop doesn't even have to worry about those because I want those to be a part of my data set. So that's what we're gonna do in here. So let me add a clean step and we'll call this desktop calcs. And so for here, let's start with the uh, dimension calculation. So in the workbook, the calculation was uh, if two from is equal to two, then we want the two field. Else, we want the from field end. So this is our dimension calculation. Save. Now it's a part of our data set. Again, let's go to the connection so there is a calculation in the workbook called connection. And this one is just concatenating the from and to fields. So we'll say from plus a dash plus two. Save. Now we've got that. Let's go to dimension order X. And this one is just an if else statement as well. If to from equals to, then we want the order to field, else we want the order from field. Now, there's a field called T circle in the workbook, and this is actually just taking the T arc field and multiplying it by two. So we'll call this T circle, say T arc, times two. Then we've got a field called T final. I'm gonna start copying and pasting these just for uh, time sake. So it's again, if from equals two, then T circle, else T arc. So again, it's just a simple non-aggregated if else. Uh, the next one, we've got a value from field. This is value from some if else, some simple division happening. But again, there's no aggregate functions here. There's no sum, average, min, max, window functions, table functions. There's nothing happening um, that's aggregating this data. So these calculations in the workbook are still happening at the row level, which means I can 
push them to prep at the row level here. So let me call that value from. We've got value two. That if dimension equals two, then if from equals two, then value divided by 202. So again, some simple non-aggregated calcs. We've got the distance. It's just subtracting the order to and from fields. And so there is math happening, right? There is um, some division, some subtraction, but it's all happening at the row level, which is why I can push it into my workbook and not worry about any um, values not calculating the way that I expect them to. So we've only got a couple more, and this one might seem a little confusing. Uh, so there's a calculation called Y arc. Um, which is really just an if statement, right? So we've got an if the distance is less than one, return negative one, otherwise return one. We're multiplying that by the radius and then we're multiplying that by the sine of T arc. Again, this is happening at the row level in the workbook, which means we can push it to the row level here in prep. So we'll call that Y arc. Uh, two more, um, there's one called no migration, which is used as a filter in the workbook. That no migration. We've got one more, and it's just the number of records field. So, the number of records used to be a field that was embedded in the desktop. Um, they changed it, uh, I want to say last year. Um, and so, it's something that's in the workbook. So, we're just going to go ahead and recreate it here. So, number of records, which is just a field with a value of one, which generates a row with a value of one for every row in the data set. So, now we've recreated the structure and pushed some of these calculations into the data set so that way desktop can simplify some of its processing. Now notice we didn't push all of the calculations here. There's some calculations in the workbook that are driven by a parameter to size the um, radius of the circle and then there is uh, just some uh, other calculations that are happening in there with the x arc um, and since those have aggregate functions in them it's best to leave those in the workbook. So now I'm gonna add my output step. We'll call this arc data, put a dash YT for our YouTube video. Make sure that's gonna say where I want it to. Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm gonna run this flow. And I'm gonna open up my workbook. And so again, uh, you know what, and just, I'll oh, just open up a new one just to Go through it real quick. So opening up a new workbook with that Arc Sankey in it. Here's what it looks like originally. And so I'm gonna go to the Arc Sheet and here I'm gonna go to Data, New Data Source, go to More and get that extract that we just ran. And now I'm gonna replace the data sources. Um, one quick thing I'm gonna do before I do that is I'm gonna take this Dimension Order X field and drag that to my dimensions because that's where it is in the original data set. And so now I'm gonna replace. There's gonna be some errors and that's because there's these abbreviation fields that don't exist in my data set, but that's fine. So I'm just gonna take these and delete and say yes. And now you, there you have it. Our primary data source is our arc data and it's working just how we expect. So what we did here was we just, again, recreated that structure inside of Tableau Prep. And uh, you can see there was some data prep happening here in the workbook originally. If I look at the original data source again, there was some joins happening here in the workbook. Um, but I, I want to push this into prep to show how that data is actually being reformatted here and really to help you, if Tableau Prep is something that you've looked at, I want to help you incorporate it into your work and understand what are the benefits are. And also, there's some of these best practices that we're going to start introducing. Like I said, pushing some of these non-aggregate calculations into the prep flow because that's going to make your workbook more performant. And um, another reason why we're going through these uh, 
viz templates again is because a lot i think a lot of the um, intimidation with some of these visits is the data prep work that goes into it um and there's you know folks like the flirtages and like tuan hong they, they've they've uh really helped increase the usage and uh accessibility of these types of visits in tableau because they've gone and done the hard work they've gone through and figured out the calculations and made those templates available but this is really for us to continue to understand how those are being put together and create a resource of Tableau prep templates that you can use as well to make the data prep side easy. So we've got more of these coming up um, and you know, I hope you stick around, are able to make use of these. Um, if there's anything that I can do on my side to help make these more useful, let me know, give me that feedback. That feedback will make this entire project better. Um, and then, like I said, the blog posts are focused on just plugging it in and using it. The videos here are focused on how they're built. And, uh, you know, a combination of those two is really going to increase your understanding of Tableau Prep, some of these visas, what's happening in the background, and just, um, you know, overall increase what you're able to do with the product. Um, and so with that, I hope to see you in the next one.